A very, very warm welcome back to Rasvet for episode 14 with me, Mr. Silly P. It's half past 11 at night and here at Rasvet on Rasvet. The work never stops. I suddenly realised after doing our soil sampling and then doing the cotton harvest here, not soil sampling, our test plots, and then the, the cotton harvest here on field seven. This needed ploughing, the other field needed cultivating before I can get on here in the morning and do the soil sampling. The prototype soil sampler should be arriving early morning. I'm not quite sure what time. So we'll get out here and do the soil sampling few fertilising contracts popped up as well so I've got a couple of workers well one worker doing fertilising at the moment up on field 15 I think there are two or three other fields that require a bit of fertiliser so I thought we'd be a, do a bit of, no, a bit of nocturnal fertilising and I'll get this done now I know it's not ideal to be uh, recording or watching in the dark but I wanted to get this done but also again I didn't want that kind of jump in the morning it's like let's go and do soil sampling and the ploughing's already done and you know I have leased I'm just going to buy but I have leased the um, RYC1 6 metre I've leased this because it's cheaper I mean there are all sorts of ploughs available it's a solid sturdy chunky plough it does the job there is the what used to be the Weber six meter which i think is the lizard six meter now lizard six meter to buy is 17 grand this is only eight i guess i haven't bought it but then it works out even cheaper as a lease as well so i thought you know what let's grab one of these let's get the plowing done i've got my cultivator already owned so when i go and do field six i'll just cultivate that that hopefully i will have done by the morning so we'll get the soil something done this plan we've finished Hopefully the cultivator will be done. I need to prep for whatever we're going to put into these next. And... Oh yeah, stump grinding. I need to get a stump grinder. There is one available that, for the wheel loader, actually. So I'm thinking maybe... I mean, there are loads available that, you know, that will go on tractors and all sorts of stuff. We don't have a skid steer loader or anything like that. But um, we do have the wheel loader, so it kind of made sense maybe to get one of those so no yeah that's the plan at the moment i'll be honest it depends how you're watching this if you're if you're watching this a long time in the future i say a long time in the future not like a you know, hundred years from now who knows that's one of those weird things actually it's always i say always cross my mind it's crossed my mind a few times that kind of weird what legacy is it a le i suppose it's a legacy isn't it in a way so it, when i was growing up we had, we, you know, my family took pictures, photographs, you know, you'd send off the film, you'd get it developed, it would come back in a packet. That all moved forward and then, you know, you've got, you do it on your phones now and you can upload, you can print at home and, you know, all this sort of stuff you can do moving forward and then taking film and video and, you know, when my kids are growing up, we've got loads of little, we had them on disc, we had them on little cassettes, we had all sorts of, you know, video. Then recording went digital, so you had, um, cameras which had which were hard disks in them and you didn't actually have to have a tape anymore and all that kind of thing but it's weird thinking about my dad and he passed away six years ago now wow six years ago yeah um apart from pictures there's not really any video there's a couple of little bits when the kids were growing up but the weird thing about doing this, about YouTubing, is this is kind of, you know, unless YouTube at some point in the future packs up and ceases to be a thing and I don't know what would happen to all the content that's kind of online, that's all there available to, for people to watch. And people can go and watch your back catalogues and they can watch all, anything you've done before. It's a weird thing I was thinking about the other day. I know it sounds really morbid. <laughs> but... For my kids, that thing of being able to hear your dad's voice, you know, if and when you know, I pass away, for me that's a lot harder to do. For them, they could just go on and watch a YouTube video, they could watch one of my blogs, one of my vlogs, they could watch 
you know, my my 50k special where I did the tour of the man cave and that kind of stuff. It's all kind of there and readily accessible. It's weird isn't it, to think of it like that. That it's that long after I'm gone, potentially that could all still be there for anyone to watch. You know. Anyway, nice. <laughs> Nice way to start back. Hey, what I was going to say was, what I started off saying was, depending on when you're watching this, if it's in the future, there will be no gap for you. For anyone who's watching this, say, regularly, um, I've been away for a week, as some of you may or may not know. A whole week away with my wife, didn't do a single video. No recording. No. Um, I did a bit of posting on Instagram, a few pictures here and there on Twitter and Facebook. Um, but yeah, didn't make a single video. So this is my first one back. I did a mod review yesterday, but this is my first Let's Play video back. And I'm feeling very kind of refreshed and invigorated and the way my, my perspective on how I'm doing stuff now, I think you get in a rut and you also get very bogged down with worrying about, I know, I've always done it. Anyone who's watched my channel knows I've always done it. I get kind of bogged down on what people think and I worry about what people are happy about watching and not happy about watching and I focus on the few people that complain and don't like something and say why don't you do this you should do that you know I've kind of while I've been away thought you know what I'm just gonna go back to doing what I started out doing when I first started doing my videos was you know what I'm doing it I'm playing it it's me but, you know I'm not forcing anyone to watch if you want to watch watch if you don't don't that's fine um, try not to get too bogged down with it. I'm just going to enjoy playing again. I, I think that's been reinvigorated in me. And also the news last week dropping that uh, Giants have announced the new version, FS22, is going to be coming out in, um, well it says Q4, which is October, November, December. Historically, new versions of the game have released in November, but that's not to say it will. You know, I'm, not, I'm not saying I know, I'm just saying it, historically they have. But that's kind of I think, I don't know whether it has, it has for me, kind of gives everyone a bit of a boost. That two year cycle, we kind of got into the habit of every two years, bomb, 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 bomb. Then they announced no, no game, it's not going to be coming out. Um, so we're now sort of two and a half years in, and it's going to be three years in if it releases in November. That thought of, okay, you know, we've got a few months now, and then there's going to be a whole load of new stuff, a whole load, you know, that kind of gives you a bit of a boost, doesn't it? Well, at least I think it does. It does for me. So, yeah, um, there may be a, have been a gap uh, uh, for you if you're watching regularly of a week. And I, 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 I'm feeling, actually, you know what, I feel great. But we're, we went out to the Lake District, as we always do. I say always do. We actually do a lot. <laughs> um, we used to go to South Coast quite a lot. Dorset Way. Weymouth was one of our favourite places to go. Um, we haven't done that in quite a while, but um, just me, Mr. Silly P and Farm Dog, and I think just making that mental decision, you know what, don't worry about it, you know, just go away, don't, don't worry about it, don't think about it. Did I check the mods hub every day? I did, of course I did. When mods got released, I was looking to see what was, what was there, what, you know, what had popped up. Um, I was keeping my eye out for one thing in particular, and if you've been following the mods in testing, there's a particular map by a friend of mine, <laughs> which has popped into testing, um, and that potentially could have dropped last week. It didn't, it failed testing, it's come back out again, but that could drop this week, potentially, we'll see. So, um, I kind of, I would get up each day and I'd sit in the garden at the farm where we were staying and buy myself a coffee and just listen to the world. And what was great about being up there, and the one thing I really noticed this time, which I haven't really as much before, I just sat and you could hear the birds tweeting and sheep in the fields and the cows at the cow farm next door and bees and just watching the birds because they've got a little, like, small forest is the wrong word for it, but a kind of little you know, wooded area behind the farm. And there were pigeons in the trees and and occasionally you would hear the odd tractor. Other than that, nothing, no sound. No people, no vehicles, no nothing. No ambulances, no police chases, no, you know, <laughs> not that happens a lot where I'm. Um, and I would sit for a good hour, let Mr. CDP have a lie in and make her a cup of tea. And 
Then we'd go out into the lakes and we did some walking and we went to various different places. It was just, yeah, much, much needed. Thank you to everyone's com for everyone's comments. Thank you for everyone's support. All the people commenting saying, you know, get away, don't worry about it, don't worry about us, we'll be here when you come back, you know, that kind of thing. I really do appreciate that. It makes it sort of so much easier and, and I'm able to relax a lot more knowing that people have been very supportive. Anyway, I've waffled on enough at the start, as I often do. I know some people like it, some people don't. It's what I do. I chat and waffle and, you know. That's just me. I'll see you in the morning. We'll get the soil sampling out. So hopefully the cultivating will be done. The, and that's how I'll probably have a few fertilising jobs under my belt. So the money will have gone up a little bit. We are in the market for a new harvester. Thank you to everyone who suggested various different harvesters. I have got one in mind. So when I get to that, I will explain how and why. Not how. Why. All become clear. See you in the morning. Seven twenty-one rolls around really quickly. And as you've just seen, we did a few contracts. We're up to four hundred seventeen thousand. That's pretty good. What I'm going to do now is where's it gone? We grab the gate up with our soil sampler. Now, the information from Red October Industrial. If you remember whenever it was a couple of episodes ago that I mentioned it. It says, here at Red October Industrial, we have developed a new technology in partnership with DJ Goham Industries that allows us to determine the types of resources deep below the, surf, uh, below the surface based upon microparticles in the soil. It says, uh, we are, all that we ask is that you sample the areas as you have been currently doing and take one sample using our device. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to whiz down in the gator. And we'll do our soil samples on field seven, so we don't have any yet. I'm going to leave one little bit of area, and we'll uh, we'll use the prototype they've sent us. Now you've seen me do this soil, sa soil sampling before, but this is the next step because this could help greatly with what we're doing in theory. to do is open that turn it here now this is one of the fields I think I did survey originally and the information was lost yes I want it next let's open it up into the field a bit, lower it down, one done, <laughs> just a few more to go, I'll edge my way around the field, there are going to be a few gaps. This new system could, could and should work very well. And if it works the way I have been led to believe it works, I'm not that bothered about overlapping. You'll see why. Hopefully. This gator doesn't actually belong to me. This belongs to the, uh, say the Embassy Agricultural Department of which country? I'm not too sure whether it's Great Britain or Ukraine or both. I don't know. I did adjust this field ever so slightly while I was ploughing. I don't know if you've noticed the track that led into the field and kind of entered the field over here somewhere 
now enters the field over there. I ploughed a little bit wider on this corner, corner, edge, or the corner is it? And then the bottom end, as you can see, is a lot straighter. Rather than it bending away, or bending in, whichever way, I've straightened out that end as well. So uh, it's all a little bit, just a little bit bigger, not, you know, not hugely so, but... So I'm going to hopefully, hopefully, I'm going to do a video, or some videos, I mean as, as more information becomes available for FS22, I'm going to do some more stuff. I would imagine near the time they'll start doing Fact Sheet Fridays and stuff as I've done before. More information will be released, more details and that kind of stuff. Now obviously I was away last week, so I missed the actual release. So like I often do with my map tours, I'm in two minds whether or not to do a video about FS22. What we know so far, what we know from release, that kind of thing. I think I'm going to. I'm going to ask the question now anyway. Just because I'm thinking about it, it's on my mind. But I will do when I do that video as well. What kind of things are you hoping for? What kind of things are you hoping to see in FS21? I know the, the list, I know when I've watched Dagoin when FAS17 was due out and that kind of thing. And he used to do those videos and then talk about what he thought was going to be in it and that kind of thing. Obviously, what people, the list of things that people want can be far more extensive than what we actually end up with. That's just the nature of the beast. But um, I'm just curious, and you know, you know, what kind of things, you know, precision farming being one of them, hasn't been mentioned yet anywhere. Is that going to be part of the base game, maybe? Is that going to come out again as another DLC? Are they going to fiddle around with the coding again and bring us a slightly different version of it? What, you know, it is... I'm just curious. It's going to be interesting to see what we kind of end up with. I know a lot of people want the uh, more interactive ground types, soil types, like sort of SnowRunner-esque type thing. So... Um, uh, yeah, you, you kind of, you get a bit more wheel slip, you can get bogged down, you know, all that kind of stuff. I honestly don't know whether we're going to get anything like that. Like I say, I will save a little bit more of that for probably a separate video. But any ideas, any thoughts, stick it in the comments. It's always interesting to read. Find out what people are thinking, you know, where the community as a whole you can kind of get a bit of a feel really for how people are feeling generally i think the uh, the whole concept of giants leaving it longer and not releasing last november a lot of people were very happy about a lot of people weren't you know there was a kind of mixed feeling about it and i think even the people that were very much you know yeah they've got to do what's right they've got to um make sure it's ready for release which brings us on to that next sticky wicket of any game that gets released these days gets released, in my opinion, unfinished. I, I, I think a lot of game companies are doing it, and they release it in a kind of beta testing form <laughs> and leave it for the public who are paying for it to do the final testing. Does that make sense? And then you get updates then occurring, and in a game that's constantly evolving, that's not too much of a problem. But I think sometimes it can be a little bit naughty and I know, you know they've got deadlines and they want to get out a version of the game is it going to be complete is it going to be perfect I don't think anything ever is is it really you know it would be lovely to think it is but there's always going to be things that will need to be tweaked and updated and changed and as I've said before you can test something in house and Giants isn't a, it's not a big company you know having been to the Erling uh, the Erling not Erling Grant. Erlangen, Erlangen as a map. The Erlangen offices, they are expanding, but it's, they've got a fairly small team. So even if you have like five people testing the game, there's a limit to what they can find. You then put it out to the public and you've got millions of people suddenly playing it. All the little things that you would never think of looking at or checking or testing or things that you would never think, well, why would people do that? But people do. Um, that's what kind of highlights any issue. So I don't, you know, is it going to be fully ready at release? I hope so. 
Only time will tell. Right, that's everything done. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and grab my tractor. I could come back with this one, but I'm going to grab another one. The prototype. So we'll leave this here. Just to prove there are no shenanigans, we have two separate ones. I'm going to go and get it. I'll see you back here in a minute. Let's hook it up and let's see what happens. Because I'm just as curious. Right, we're going to use the Ursus, I think. Because, well, uh, to be honest with you, I'm loving all the machinery I'm using on this. Because it's all different and sounds great. And Right, so the other soil sampler has been left. There we go, just round here. Now it looks exactly the same as the other one. You'll see why it's it's special. Well, <laughs> if this doesn't work, this is going to be really embarrassing. So we're going to head down to the field. And it did say on the instructions, just do one soil sample with this. These are leased. I don't own either of them actually. I don't think we're going to end up buying more fields. I'm thinking maybe the next step will be to buy a plot with for animals. Uh, we've done everything a lot, haven't we? But we could do sheep again, couldn't we? We've got plenty of grass about. Pigs are always a little bit tricky to do because you need a lot more crop. But we could do sheep, couldn't we? Where's the, where's the sheep farm? Where's the sheep farm, isn't it? We'll see how expensive it is. I know it's a bit of to in and fro in, but it's just, like I say, it's just the enjoyment. I'm feeling a bit homesick, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm, we, now, Land Rover hasn't been delivered yet. It is still being sorted. It will be coming, hopefully. Only because I want to have a bit of a tonk around, I want to have a bit of a tonk around the landscape, and, you know, but I am missing home. I'm thinking about six ashes and, I don't know. I'm really, really torn. <laughs> so, this is the second one. I have two, and apparently this will only work if you have two. So L1 and X, let's unfold. We need to get our map open. Let's go into that middle spot where I left a bit. This field is bumpy. Straighten out a bit. There are some other bits, but now. I'm gonna open this because I need to make sure. Oh, the other thing I need to do is get rid of that, the refill. I still keep getting that coming up. So, lower. Take soil sample. So I've only done one soil sample with this. Now, as far as I'm aware, if I now send soil samples, so that says soil samples taken one. I'm not sure this is going to work, you know, but we're about to find out. Send soil samples. The soil samples now sent for analysis. So what, what, as far as I can tell, what's supposed to happen is I've been charged 100 for soil samples analysed. Right? So now let's look at our detailed mapping, shall we? So I... I did all of the soil samples. How many did I do in the end? I can't remember. I did an absolute load, didn't I? Did all those soil samples. We had quite a few on one soil sampler. Using the prototype soil sampler, the second one. I did one soil sample, sent that one off, and rather than charge me for all of them, I got all of my soil samples done for the cost of one.
Hmm. I mean, on on the scale of the Raspet kind of farm club nefarious behaviour, it's it's up there, isn't it? It's not what you would say kosher. It's a little bit, but. Hmm. I don't know what to say really. <laughs> Hundred for all those soil samples. Oh, I'm running low on fuel as well. Well, we've got our soil sampling. The other thing I was curious about, and I don't know about, I don't know the, the facts behind this. I was sent a load of information. I was sent a load of stuff by GB from Six Ashes, and he sent me a crop yield versus soil type. So each of the soil types, the crops, and then what they will yield maximum. Now, I don't know if that's just for six ashes or whether that's generic across all maps. I don't know if the, the mappers set them themselves, but I have got... Because that will give you a better gauge on, depending on your soil type, what your main soil type is, what the best crop is to plant. Some will only yield at 80, some will yield at 90, some will go to 100, 125 depending on the soil type. I think one of the worst soil types is loamy sand. Loamy sand seems to be pretty bad, apart from potatoes, which I think yield at about 100%. So, like I say, I'm not sure, if anyone knows, is that the same across everything? Does that, does that kind of stand? If I remember, at this point, I think I put this, this up as well on when I was doing Six Ashes, but I'm going to put it up on the screen. Like I say, if I remember. And let me know. Because looking at that, I mean, one of the best ones is just loam. If you've got loam, that's absolutely fantastic. Our soil types at the moment are sitting on... What's the worst one? Loamy sand. Right, we've got a tiny bit of loamy sand there. That's good. Sandy loam is okay. Loam. Now, nearly half our field is loam. So there's quite a few different crops we can put down. It says, providing the conditions are all right, we should get 125% on that, which should be quite good. So actually, between the two, it's finding one that's 125% on both, but there aren't many. Hmm. I'll have to give that some thought. But, there we go. Prototype soil sampler. It works even if it is a little bit <clears throat> you know what I mean <laughs> so with all that being said uh, let's raise that let's fold it so the key to it is having two now obviously on the bigger fields I know a lot of it a lot of people have still said you know it's all well and good but the soil sampling if you're on massive fields it takes a long time not just the cost of it which I think we've just worked out we can pretty much get the cost down to 100 <laughs> for whatever size field I would be curious to try on bigger field. I mean there's no reason why it won't work on any other fields but it just takes time and I, and I guess that's what people find frustrating I suppose if there was a soil sampler but yeah but the problem is I was say if a soil sampler took a sample over a large area then the problem is yeah it wouldn't work would it because your, your field changes across a much larger area anyway regardless of that I'm going to get these back then. I think what I might do... I'm going to give the gator back. I haven't really used it very much. I'm using my tractors and stuff all the time. So what I think I might do... Let's get the gator back. Uh, next step then. So we've, we've got the fields done. It's ploughed. Soil sampling's done. We've worked out that we can... You know, that works. So it's stump grinding. Now I've, I've leased... I have pre-leased. And we have it at the farm. The stump grinder. Now it's a Lee pair stump grinder, but I've got it on my case wheel loader, which is absolutely fine. It will remove whole trees as well. So I did on my way over kind of go around the yard a bit. I took a couple of silver birches out and a few of those, but I've got to now remember where I left all the stumps. It's all well and good cutting all the trees because I want to be able to cut the grass a lot easier next time I cut grass. But if I haven't removed all the stumps, the tree might as well just still be there because I'm going to keep hitting, hitting the stumps. So I've got to remember where I took them all out from. But we'll get a few out now. 
So 417 grand, I need to look at. So yeah, next next job, another harvester. And like I said, either a duplicate harvester or replacing. The other thing is a planter, because we've got our cedar, but I can't do any planted crops. I don't know if it's still going to be available, but let me just show you. Under our contracts, yeah, sowing field five, 62 grand. But it's for cotton, and I need a planter. Now, I could use their equipment. I'll take a hit of eight grand, so I'll still make a fair bit of money on that, actually. I don't know whether I could just use theirs, use a bit of modern equipment. I could do for the sake of that contract, couldn't I? You know what? I'm going to yeah, I'm going to accept it. Oh, no, I'm going to borrow items. Yeah, I nearly accepted that then. I'm going to borrow items on that one. So that's now active. So what I'll do is I'll grab their equipment, and we'll have a go with that. But I was looking at planters and planters to kind of fit the area where we are and the size of machinery we've got and stuff like that is a little bit trickier to do i did find a couple and what i'll do is we'll go no, we'll have a look and uh, planters because again my the premise being rather than a massive planter multiple vehicles running smaller planters it's small machinery, a lot of the people have got very different things. Now, like I said before, there are farms that are running bigger gear, but we do have available these rail ones, the rail Unisem MS6, 3,500, and that's a 4.5 metre. Two of those, two tractors, that gives me nine metres, right? And that's going to cost me seven grand. To do nine metres, capacity is not great, but that's not too much of a problem. I'll just go backwards and forwards. To get a nine metre planter for the horse that's 93 grand so i can get the equivalent nine meters for seven grand or the maestro there for example for 93 if i ran three of those because i've got three tractors i could do couldn't i i know it's a bit of an odd way of going about it but it works out cheaper Slot count wise, the first one's going to be five, then that will drop down to one. So I'll be looking at seven slots for three if I go down that route. Now, obviously, what it kind of goes against the grain of what we usually do. I say we, I mean, generally speaking, you get your farm and you build up and you build up, even if you're doing a kind of start from scratch. And the whole premise being you build up and build up, you get enough money to buy bigger machinery, more expensive machinery, larger tractors, bigger seeders, bigger planters. But I think one of the things I kind of said right from the word go was this was going to be possibly more about multiple bits of machinery rather than bigger. So I think maybe that's what we'll do. I'll go and get the gauge in a little while. I love this. I absolutely love it. So, yeah, case wheel loader. We've got this one. We've got the lead pair M422. That comes with the... Leap S6. So I've had a week away, haven't I? Leap S6. Is it 622? The Leap Her wheel loader that I've got on Lucas Island. It will hook up to this. It is a mulcher. Now, obviously, there's a little bit of a disconnect there. You sometimes get that across. There's a little bit of floating, but it should still work. <laughs> what I've got to do is find all the stumps. <laughs> and I did quite a lot. So it's remembering where all the trees were. I think we had one here. This thing will just, I mean, it just demolishes things. There you go. Stump gone. <laughs> Barely even got close to the ground with it. Another one. Gone. Is there one over here? I might just put the lights on. I thought there was another one over here somewhere. I'm sure I'll come across it. So on my way over, I did take out, there was a big kind of, well, it wasn't a bush, it was kind of a tree slash bush just there. That's been removed. A couple of silver birches. I'm gradually clearing the yard. But I think there were some... Slows that a bit. There were some stumps. Oh, man. I suppose what you should do, I don't know whether people do it in the real world, I don't know, having never done stump removal for real, if you're going along and you're, you're taking a lot of trees out and a lot of stumps out, 
Do you mark them like the little flag, like little flag markers? The sort of flag markers I use for marking drain tiles and that kind of thing. I suppose that would be perfect, wouldn't it? Let's see if I know. Okay. There we go. That one close to there. There's one down there. Is that gone? Yep. I'll do the rest, any I can remember inside inside the wire. We'll do that later, but I can see some of the bigger ones out here. We'll get all these out. It's going to take me some time to go around and do all these. But in all honesty, not as long as with some of the stump grinders. This thing is super powerful, as you can see. <laughs> we'll take out a silver birch or two. It will just mean that clearing this or going around and... Um, mowing like I did before will be so much easier I am going to look at I mean potentially we do need to get a larger tractor there is another one like we've got the large is it Kras? I can never remember the name I did have a list of it all written down um, that we've got there is another version of that a newer version available that's got a front three point link so potentially we could get a set of mowers that mow and wind row. But again, that wasn't, again, that's not the point of what I was doing, was it? It was supposed to be down to the tyre in that tree. I'm going to leave that one where it is. I don't want to do anything daft and cause myself problems. Where are your stumps? Now, on my last... Oh, that's interesting. Why is that not... It's not even registered there's one there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, on my last mod review, depend, yeah, earlier today, depends when this gets posted, hopefully this will be posted on Monday, I mentioned about 4K, and hopefully the video will render and post up to 4K. And I think it might be my intro clip that was causing the problem of me not being able to post in 4K, because my recording's in 4K, my thumbnails are in 4K, and every time I rendered, it was saying it wasn't 4K. But all of my editing was all showing 4K and everything was absolutely rosy. So I'm going to have a fiddle around. I've done one without my intro clip, which I'm like a bit gutted about because it's it's my thing. It's my kind of... my brand, I suppose. I'm a little bit concerned. So it's either going to be... I'm going to have to fiddle around and somebody who's much smarter than me either redoes it and does it in 4K or... I don't think I can, you can't scale something up to 4K if it wasn't 4K in the first place because the quality's not there, I think. Not sure about that. Either it's going to mean going forwards, I don't use that intro clip. Like I say, I'm a, I'm a little bit gutted about that. I, I really would rather keep it. So I'm going to have a test with and a test without, see if I can fiddle around with the settings because I'm sure it should work. Now, obviously, you don't want to spend the next however long just watching me grinding stumps out. But it was the next job on my list of things to do. Have we moved forward in this episode? Yes, we have. I've got ploughing done, cultivating done, soil sampling done. We're ready to put a crop in the ground. I'm still deciding what to do now about whether to get planters or a larger planter. A larger planter will require a larger tractor. Tractor. And then obviously harvester. With a larger harvester, it's going to mean I can take on uh, more harvesting contracts as well. Help out the local farmers. Oh, that's what I was going to check. Before we, before we go, the price of sand. Has that gone up? Because I've got a whole load of sand sitting over there. No construction site so still five six one. That's terrible. Somebody told me that a while ago. So you know, with the amount of sand that's over in the uh, the sand pit, with a good price, you can make a lot of money. And I think they had prices are upwards of a thousand. I haven't even. I've not come close. Mind you, that could be they might have had their economy set on easy. 
again, it's always difficult when people suggest things and say, oh, I did this, I did that, and the price was this, the price was that. But yeah, I guess some of that will depend on economy settings and those kind of things. I suppose I can go and sell it anyway. I need to do a delivery today. I haven't. I didn't do one yesterday. I held off. It's not going to be a huge amount of money for what I've got in there, but it's all money in the bank. And then what I need to do is pay the next chunk off of the loan. And then we move forward. Oh yeah, the thing was, that's pigs. Cows are over there, that direction. Sheep are over that way. Let's check the map again. So we are looking, where's the sheep farm? Sheep farm's there. How much is that? 103 grand. Okay, that's doable. The cow farm is there. That's 333,000. Um, maybe sheep then. That's definitely doable. We've got grass, so we can do grass. We can do hay to feed them. We can get some wool on the go. At least we'll be moving into livestock as well. Potentially that'll work. How much is the pigs? 128 grand. But yeah, like I say, they're a little bit trickier to, to uh, provide feed for. I mean, not impossible to provide feed for. I've done it before, but if you're going for a slightly easier option to get yourself going, I think um, sheep would be the way to go. Right. I'm going to take a few more of these out and then what I'll do, I'll see you in a minute, we'll get up to the construction site. I'm curious to see actually how they're getting with the building as well after we had the, the lumber taken to the sawmill. They've had a couple of deliveries as well. I've, I've lost a whole load of tree stumps somewhere in the world. Okay, that's an interesting one. Let's, let's pretend we never saw that. Oh, oh, there's one. There's one. Should have, should have done this as I went along, shouldn't I, really? There we go. Right, I'll see you over at the construction site in a little while. And we'll get that sand delivered, check on the construction. I'll do a bit more of this off-screen. I decided that rather than sell the sand now at a, a lower price, I'd come and grab the equipment that I've borrowed to do uh, the contract on Field 5. And it's strangely nice. It's, it, the tractor feels absolutely massive compared to what I've been driving. And the planter is seems huge as well. Although, this is the 9 metre Maestro. It's the Maestro, isn't it? Oh, it might be the 12 metre, I was going to say seems very big but it only holds 2,000 litres of seed the rest is fertiliser oh nothing else to say was construction is coming along nicely they're getting going on the first plot second plot's being dug excavators over there they'll go into construction with that one and they'll gradually start working their way around whether or not I'm going to do I'm going to do regular sand but whether I need to do regular lumber delivery is not i don't know potentially we do own that plot of land around the sand pit that does have a lot of forestry so i, I could do a load of trees every now and again as well with that let's go onto the road get down to field five and i can get started wow <laughs> it does feel huge Ooh. Actually, I don't want to go past field five. I know it's a huge field, isn't it? It's right down the southwest, yeah, southwest corner. There in no time, 32 miles an hour. I've been chugging around on my little Ursus and loving it. Lucas Island will be coming shortly. Right, we are pretty much here. Can you come to the field from here? I guess I can. I'll just go across the grass. I'm probably not supposed to. But... Okay. Let's open that out. Go 
and my mirrors, we seem to be okay. I'll put in cotton in the ground. I come over a little bit. Bottom right hand edge of that right hand mirror. Run that along the edge and I should. Nope. Left hand edge of that mirror. I was just over a little bit too far. Let's try that. It's just so I don't keep looking back over my shoulder. And off we go. This is going to take a little while, actually. But it pays out very nicely. I think what we'll do before we finish, let's get on here. Let's repay another 10 grand. You know what? Let's make it 15. Yep, what we owe is coming down. I'll probably pay a bit more off, actually, when we get the money for this contract. Let's check that again. Much better, there we go, perfect. Perfect. Well, we have come to the end of another episode. Hope you've enjoyed it. We are looking to expand. But like I said, I am I am feeling homesick. Um, yeah. While I was away, I was thinking about moving back for good. I'm enjoying this a lot. But there was just something about Six Ashes, I just strangely felt very at home there i don't know why it just did but anyway yeah hope you've enjoyed the episode if you have please give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do as always thanks for watching <laughs>